This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Grant Hall's with us here on Halftime on Wednesday morning. Grant, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Lots going on up here, huh, the last week or so. Certainly has been. Roster churn, uh, transfer portal, spring uh, game-ish sort of a thing with no score kept, and um, and wins. Baseball wins and softball wins, so you're right. We're, um, let's, uh, let's start with baseball. 32-game home run streak ends, but who cares? Because uh, four game winning streak. These midweek games recently, uh, they're either they're either total blowouts. I mean, laughers that get that are ten run rules, or or they're they're pretty darn tight. I mean, you look at a six three game that was that was tied in the seventh inning, and really, if 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 UCA makes a couple of the routine plays, we might be talking about a different thing this morning. Yeah, and then they narrowly missed a three run homer there in the last inning. They could have tied yeah. it. Also, really good ball game. I thought uh, a lot of interesting plays. The Arkansas benefited from uh, their center fielder losing one in the lights. Uh, they wasn't that big. They got a double on that, I guess, and uh, led to some good things. So they got the win, and they uh, are going to Georgia now for, what, games 6, 5, and 1 p.m., I think, Thursday through Saturday. And there were a couple of news-making things coming out of the uh, post-game press conference. Dave Van Horn mentioning that uh, Bray Tigert, uh, if he's on the 27-man roster for this trip, will pitch. You know, if you, if you see him on, in the group there, and then the other one was, um, it looks like now uh, with with Wagner, who's in a cast, you know, had that surgery uh, on that hairline fracture. He thinks he could maybe get back for the South Carolina series and then Vanderbilt at the end. So it looks like he's going to miss the next three SEC series. That's right. That's right. And um, and and getting Tigered back this week would be really interesting. I think they've kicked around the idea of, of maybe starting him, or I think the term would be opening him. You know, I don't think they'd be out there for more than three to four innings, uh, but you never know. But I, th- I think and it's be- we've seen Gage Wood and Dylan Carter grow into the successful relievers that they've turned into. So you know, and you got Hagen Smith working well out of the pen. I don't know exactly how they'll work these this pitching staff. Like who's in what role and everything. I, I just know right now it feels like they've that they might that they might have enough pitching. Well, and Dave said last night if Tiger can go and everything that they might they might start having fewer TBAs. In other words, maybe they can. It's just so important. He said to uh, to win that first. He said to win any time you're ahead. You know that people wondered about pitching uh, Holland and, and, and then also uh, Hagen Smith in that game last week in the same game. But you can tell how important the first game is and just winning when you're ahead. So uh, they're in pretty good shape. I mean, they, you look at the way the conference has gone recently. I think at one point the West was about 19 games behind the East. Now it's down to 13, and and some of those teams got a little bit better. So uh, Georgia. I know beat Clemson last night. I think you said they're twenty and seventeen, uh, but they mentioned that they. You know, I think they beat Kentucky in a series, so he's preparing for that team. Uh, it seemed like we talked uh, all day yesterday about Jordan Walsh. So I'll do one Jordan Walsh question before we talk a little little football. I think it's good that he's getting some information and, and he's going to try to find out the right way that he's leaving his being able to stay stay eligible because I think he's a couple years away. Uh, just how difficult is it now with college basketball, with all these rules and the changes and the, the portal and the guys going, you just don't get players staying in college basketball for three years anymore. Yeah. I liked what you said yesterday, Matt, about, uh, come on, he's the, he's the starting power forward for next how year. How cool is that? Know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's, that's the hope. And that, you know, uh, they've, they've got these five guards, I guess it is coming in, uh, or guys who can play guard, in the transfer portal. And of course, uh, you know, people wonder about Devo and his role and all that, but, uh, it's, it's uh, man, you can't, you can't tell the players without a scorecard. Can you anymore? You got to learn, learn a lot of new players each year. 
Yeah, I think Debo Debo's going to fit in because he plays defense uh, and and he doesn't need the ball in his hands to score. I, I like these these rangy guards. They're and 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 it's going to be it's one of those things I heard Coach Cal talk about. Uh, you know, ten years ago when he was getting all those five star recruits, he said, "How much? How many points did you average? How many points did you average? How many points did you average?" Now there's only one basketball. It's not going to happen. You know, you got to define your roles. You're not going to average the. You know, it, it might be by committee. One game, the player you you might have five different guys lead the team in scoring in conference games instead of just having one guy. Matt, reading the article in Hog Sports from Curtis Wilkerson and, and, and the quote that Jordan said, it's it's that he realized that that could be his role for this team, that he didn't have to score, that there were so many other things that he's able to do. And, man, you can Same see with that Debo, in the NCAA right? yeah, tournament. Yeah. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah, and as you mentioned, Debo's such a lockdown defender. I mean, uh, that's you know that's not to be sneezed at, what he can do there. No, I'm a I'm a big Devo guy. I think there's there's going to be time. There's going to be 30 minutes a game uh, for Devo. Uh, did you get a chance to look at the str- spring scrimmage? And I'm hearing a lot about the defensive ends and being able to rush the passer, which I think is going to be good. Uh, how about that back four? We, our weakest link last year was the the safeties and cornerbacks. Have we done anything there to patch those holes? Yeah, it all looked pretty good to me, Matt. I mean, I, I saw uh, most of the scrimmage and. Landon Jackson was impressive. You know, of course, you you can't, you can't really go by the sack numbers, uh, the 10, because a lot of those KJ would have slipped out. Right. And I, I thought he, you know, he and Dan Ninos, have, I think, have meshed well together. Uh, he talked about Ninos uh, being good fundamentally and technically and all that. Of course, they got the, the NFL uh, uh, verbiage now, if you want to call it that. But uh, it all looked pretty good to me. Um, especially Satania, who, you know, Arkansas has got a guy now who can get separation and they can find him and then hit him for touchdowns, you know, kind of like those Alabama receivers of a, of a few years ago, if they can do that. Um, That's a must-have, Grant. Does how, how are Satania's yeah. hands, in your opinion? Because a lot of times you get those speed guys and they can't catch the ball very well. Uh, can Is he natural when it comes to catching the ball? Yeah, really, really good. The one that he seemed to be overthrown and he brought it in pretty naturally, you know, uh, that was good to see. Of course, we saw it uh, at Fayetteville High School, but it's a different deal. He was hurt last year. By the way, I talked to him after the press conference. He is planning to run track next year. You know, he, he's he's redshirting this year. Um, you know, the season's a, a good way toward being done, but he does have that in his future at Arkansas, too. So uh, that's a good deal. And then the, back to basketball just for a second. Uh, someone told me last night that, uh, that Sasha Goforth, Phil is practicing with the team. You know that they only got about ten players right now on the women's basketball mm-hmm. team. Uh, you know they lost Barnum and uh, and Langerman, but uh, she's. Uh, you know I know Mike Neighbors was kind of hoping all year that that this would happen, and uh, she's back with them. So that that's a big deal, and they've got four new ones I think coming in, and uh, so that'll be a, a little different looking team next year also. Yeah, Grant, you know, the, 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 the deal with Sasha this year was really interesting because you, you see her at games, and uh, I think she came to practice sometimes, but, I mean, she had the roster spot if she wanted it. I think she still had the scholarship. Uh, but there, there wasn't any pressure put on her about, hey, you got to keep coming up here. you got to show up. You know, if you want to be part of this team in the future, if you think basketball is part of your future, I don't think that was anything that happened here. I just think there was still this pull of, of the sport and the pull of her teammates, um, and, you know, like the pull of the atmosphere of being inside the building for games that kept her coming back for games. She sat right there on the bench with the team. She was in the huddle and the timeouts and everything. You know, she just wasn't she just wasn't practicing and playing. And we've got all this talk about transfer portal, and, yeah, you, you pointed out the two players that have decided to go into the portal in, um, in Aaron Barnum and Riley Langerman. Well, I don't know if you're going to get many players from the portal for Arkansas this year, but you could get Sasha Goforth back, and if she feels like she wants to do it, and I, you know, I don't know what it's like to deal with that, the stomach ailment that she was that she was living with and playing well with, but but kind of hiding at least from a public view of how that affected her. Um, she's a really good player, an incredible yeah, defender, I mean, it, it, and I think that it, that, she, you know, that was a tough thing for this last year is that you couldn't plan for that. Yeah, she. You know, I mean, she was getting sick basically every day and and not sleeping well and all that. And I hope that's gotten better, you know. But uh, she she's shown a lot of toughness and resilience through this, and it'd be great to see her out there next year. 
Yeah, I agree. What do you make of Riley Langerman in the in the transfer portal? Because that one felt, you know, R- Riley is a is like a is a is a, a culture definer for a team. I think wherever it is that she's go, she goes and accepted because she hustles so hard, she plays so hard, and and she's she's great with the community and 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 the strength that she's showed in her life. And I think she's just wonderful. But that one kind of came out of left field. Yeah, I, I was surprised by it too, Phil, and really was a fan of hers and how hard she played and. Uh, got all those rebounds and everything, and uh, I, I just really don't have the answer to that, but I hope she does well uh, mm-hmm. wherever she goes. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B-L-E-A-V. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts.